for this week's Your Health segment. We are joined by Dr. Emily Durantz and Dr. Jacob Wines. Both are instructors of orthopedics at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and podiatric surgeons at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctors, thanks to both of you for being here. Thank Thank you. you. Why are foot concerns such a big part of diabetes? What what's the mechanism? What happens? Well, you know, diabetics have high glucose or sugars in their blood, and therefore it, it um, affects those small nerves and small vessels, and their specifically their toes and their feet. Um, so they're prone to neuropathy, which is loss of sensation in their feet, uh, which can lead to ulcers or amputations or high risk of infections. Um, also, the can uh, decrease the blood flow as well, which can lead to problems as well. At, at what point in in somebody's um trajectory of having diabetes, do do the feet become a problem? Is it day one or is it after a length of time? See, I think that's a really good question because ultimately what it comes down to is establishing the appropriate, what we say, glycemic control and the amount of sugar levels that are in your body. As those sugar levels become increasingly higher, and there are ways to measure that, you could either measure it every morning or you can measure it at a three-month interval. What I'd like to really convey is the importance of a known value called the HbA1c, which is the percent of sugar that's bound to a red blood cell over the course of a three-month span. The worse that control is over a three-month span can then lead to the complications that Dr. Durant had alluded to with the vascularity, with the uh, glycosylation of the tendons, and problems with the nerves. Is that uh, a measurement that is typically monitored? Yes, sir, it definitely is. I mean, it's something that uh, I feel that every patient should have a great grasp on. If there's anything that anyone takes away that is diabetic, is they should really assess what their HbA1c number is, as that could be a predictor of your success of surgery, if you need it, um, your success of getting past whatever diabetic complications you have, like the neuropathy or the decreased sensation. And the better that control is, the better your circulation will be, both in your feet and in your heart. As they say, if the heart is blue, the feet are too. At what point does somebody typically seek help for this? I mean, do you you see people coming in who, wow, you know, I wish you'd come in two years ago. All the time, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, some of our patients, they wait until it's too late basically, before they come into their office. So that's why it's important that you do have a great primary care doctor and endocrinologist on your team, as well as a podiatrist, to have somebody there when you see something wrong. Do do you ever see people where this is the mechanism by which the diabetes is diagnosed? Does anybody, everybody knows they have diabetes by the time you see them? Um, Most everybody, but sometimes you'll get somebody that has a complaint of tingling or burning in their feet and they've never been tested before. Yeah, often they'll say that it feels like they're walking on pins and needles. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about uh, diabetic uh, foot concerns, give us a call. The number is up on the screen. You could also tweet us at MPT News. So how can you help? What, What are the treatments? Well, you start off with a comprehensive diabetic foot exam, um, and then we then assess the patient, how at risk are you to develop these complications of diabetic, of diabetes. Um, ultimately, you can intervene by a pro- providing appropriate shoe wear, where you have an extra depth shoe that doesn't rub. After all, it's friction combined with pressure that's going to cause sores to develop, especially if you have decreased sensation. It's very important that we also prescribe what we say are non-invasive vascular tests, which are basically circulation tests for the patient to see where their circulation is. And if it needs any intervention, sometimes we'll prescribe uh, medicine to help with the nerve discomfort. At times, if the nerve discomfort is so severe, we can even opt for nerve decompression procedures or try to treat it um, with the help of our other medical providers. Again, uh, going back to Dr. Durance's point, it's very important to have that team approach to dealing with a diabetic patient. Let's take a phone call. Uh, Baltimore City, this is Everett. Everett, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Everett Patterson. I'm a 47-year African-American male. Uh, my dad, he's still alive, thank God. Um, he's been diagnosed with diabetes. And I have a brother who is four years older than myself. Hi, my name is Everett Patterson. Uh, Everett, I'm, yeah, we heard that, sir. Well, okay. What's your question? The question is, I am 47 years old, and I, at, at night when I'm laying down flat, I know that the bottom of my feet be itching. Is that a concern? I've never been tested for diabetes or whatnot. All right. We appreciate the question. We'll get you an answer on the air. Does that fit? Itching? 
It can, yeah. So, I mean, especially if you have a family history of diabetes, it's definitely worth uh, checking out. Um, but it could be multiple other issues as well. And you know, something that does come out to my mind is if you have itching combined with a uh, dryness of the skin that is particularly between the toes, um, one thing to consider would be just run-of-the-mill athlete's foot, um, and that could ease Everett's concerns that this may not be a manifestation yeah, of diabetes. Much easier diagnosis. And, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> and all the more reason to get that A1C level checked and check your blood sugar, and more than likely, if the blood sugar is okay, then more than likely his feet are too. Let's talk to uh, Steve in Montgomery County. Steve, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I have idiopathic neuropathy, meaning they don't know the cause of it, and I actually lead a support group, and uh, more than half of us have idiopathic. So if you don't have diabetes and you've taken all the tests and your A1C levels, everything's fine, any breakthroughs, any, anything going on to figure out what causes neuropathy if it's not diabetes? We're, we're not finding much. There's, there's so, Steve, is this, uh, if I can ask, is this your hands too or just your feet? No, just the feet. Okay, thank you, sir. Thoughts on that? I mean, he, it could be any nerve compression, you know, from the back, the spine, all the way down uh, the line to the feet that could be compressed. You know, there's many different reasons why people develop neuropathy, whether it be alcoholic neuropathy or medications, drug-induced neuropathy or, you know, other problems like that. Do you that. see these problems more with, with people who are on their feet all the time as opposed to maybe having a desk job? No, not necessarily. Yeah. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, there are other phenomena. There's a chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, which is a leading cause of idiopathic neuropathy. Um, and also, one thing to take into account and maybe could be worth exploring is following up with a rheumatologist and getting the appropriate testing, because there might be a mixed connective tissue disorder associated, or even a vasculitis, which means inflammation of the blood vessels, which can be causing this neuropathic type of symptoms that are caller is experiencing. Let's take a call from Washington. This is Rodney. Rodney, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Yes, my question is, uh, I've developed a dry rash on the top of my feet. Um, I was issued ammonia lactate cream. Do you have diabetes, sir? Yes, I am a type 2. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, does that fit as well? The top um, of the feet? Not do, do you see these issues? Does it tend to be the sides, the bottom? Usually yeah. with uh, athlete's foot and fissuring that happens, or cracking of the skin, usually happens between the feet, or between the toes and on the bottoms. When it's on top, we'd be more concerned about a inflammation of the skin, sometimes a dermatological called... Dermatological condition. Exactly, yeah. a dermatitis. So maybe the ammonium lactate, which helps soften skin, may not be the most appropriate remedy for it. He may need something like a steroid, but that would be something to consult with either a podiatric surgeon or a dermatologist to get those answers. I just said half a minute. Um, the important takeaway for people, if you have diabetes, take care of your feet. Check your feet. And, and aside from the doctor visits, what can you do? Well, definitely check your feet every day. You know, if something's not right, if you have a new blister, callus, anything bleeding or draining needs to be seen right away. Very good. Doctors Durants and Wines, appreciate the time. Thanks Thank for you. coming by. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.